Georgia Virtue presents the Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong podcast. Thank you for listening to episode 215. This week, we have truck inspections, drunken child support, Puerto Rican benefits, a commissioner left out in the cold, bang out, and the First Amendment. I'm Dave Roberts. With me is my partner in this endeavor, writer, journalist, dog mom, Jessica Salaji. Hi, Dave. How are you? Uh, fine. Just great. <laughs> I love my job. I love working with governments. Everything's great. Super. You went to school to work with government. Well, you know, when I... When maybe, I got my master's, maybe they should too. When I got my master's, I was like, you had to pick a a focus, and at the time, I wanted to do something with like a nonprofit, but I had to pick a secondary one because public administration goes into nonprofits too. But um, I wanted, I picked a second one, which was local government, but I still didn't really have an idea that, that it was going to be like this. I mean, I knew government was bad. I was the only libertarian in the program, but like, oh my God. Ugh. It just keeps getting worse, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, now if you want to work for a nonprofit, Dr. Cool is hiring. Mm hmm. You mean a not for profit? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I tell you, uh, the, the Chamber Awards are coming up, and I'm about to nominate Dr. Cool for Nonprofit of the Year. Mm hmm. But um, uh, oh, twenty twenty one just just yeah just hammered us because of uh, because of rising material prices. I couldn't keep up with it. You know, I'd, I'd give a bid based on what I thought prices were, then I'd get the bill and go, "Oh my god!" Yeah. <laughs> well, and stuff was it continues to, but it's been changing so quickly. I think that's difficult too. Oh, I've had multiple price increases this year. It's only the second quarter. Mm-hmm. Now, when I talk about price increases on materials, I'm talking about ten percent each one. And that, that those are big numbers. So it's it's uh, it is the uh, brave new world this year. I am not coming off the hip with any prices. I I am going to call and get prices and availability for before I even give anybody a price on just a basic system or something like that. I, I I'm calling. It's all Putin's fault, apparently. Oh right, mm-hmm. sure. It couldn't be. Two administrations in a row giving away a bunch of money. The Fed opening the ticket. Well, in 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 this COVID era, mm, okay, I should say no. The this you know it's too big to fail. Going all the way back to to W. Yeah, everyone's. Sucks. What's what's bad is the Fed has an in, inflation target of like two percent. Like they want inflation, mm-hmm. not this much. Not a starter home going for four hundred thousand dollars in Metro Atlanta. That's that. Of course, they don't even count homes in the inflation price. Believe it or not. Really, uh, those numbers don't exist. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, they don't. They don't put fuel in there either. I did know that part, but yeah, they, they, yeah, they don't count home prices in there, which is funny because when you do count in the prices of what it takes to build a home, lumber, right. sheetrock, everything else, all those prices are in there, but. They don't include the 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 home price, the property prices that are out of control. You know, real estate where I am has gone from raw land, raw land has gone from eh, three to five thousand an acre to thirty to fifty an acre, which is insane to me. Because again, it's raw land; it, it has nothing on it. You, you if you're going to build on it, you've got to bring in your own utilities and and all that stuff. It's it's raw. <laughs> Sucks. So, Greg Abbott, this is controversial truck inspection policy. It didn't really do much. I I didn't hear about this until he repealed it or withdrew it or whatever, lifted it. Um, so I'm a little bit behind the curve. But obviously, had had you heard about this? Are you familiar with this program where he stopped? They had stopped every commercial truck at the Mexico border um, in a 30-day period 
to check for contraband, drugs, blah, blah, blah. And he said that, um, like, citing the er the surge in um, border crossings, I guess he thought, he said it was all intertwined. Yeah, this is not within the purview of the state. Now, look, I get Um, it. He's mad because the border is porous. mm -hmm. But the border is a federal issue. And look, I'm a 10th Amendment guy. What you can leave to the states, leave to the states. But the border itself is a federal issue. And elections have consequences. Well, and I agree with that, except that I think when you're living there, you have a totally different perspective on like you. I mean, what does the Constitution say about if the federal duty or if the federal government has a duty to act and they they just don't? Well, I I agree. But, you know, this policy, I don't agree with the state stopping every truck. And that's and that's the problem is the trucks are already stopped at the border. But if they didn't stop every truck. And and some do. So uh, I guess they have a essentially a fast pass. People have already been cleared. Uh, that kind of stuff, but he, it resulted in little to no drugs, weapons, or any type of contraband. Oh yeah. It was totally, um, I, you know, he, Abbott said that it was because he announced it and then the cartels knew that he was doing it. So they withheld doing it. Mm. Yeah. I, I, that's, I'm not sure about that. That is governmental backwards reasoning. Well, obviously it worked because we didn't find anything. What? Well, and look, I don't think I don't think Abbott's a bad guy, but he's, you know, he's in a re-election campaign this year too. I think, uh, so he's he's trying to make a splash for for his constituents, for his core voter. Yeah, I don't know, you know. <laughs> I guess, you know, they said that. I don't think that this is why he did it at all. I really don't. I mean, because there are so many other ways you could institute something like this if you were trying to. But they said that they conducted 4,100 inspections, finding no illegal contraband. But 850 trucks were taken off the road for various issues with vehicle equipment. And 345 trucks were cited for oil leaks or underinflated tires. Now, like our commercial motor vehicle unit that under Department of Public Safety. I mean, they they are when you have a commercial driver's license, like you're subject to additional inspections and your your rights are limited on the road and with regard to your your vehicle. But I don't think that they did it for money, but they sure are going to make some money off of this because it's not like I mean, a citation with a commercial driver's license is like it's not it's not like a fifty dollar like seatbelt thing or something. Right. So what they accomplished was raising money. They found some a couple oil leaks and some underinflated tires, maybe a couple of vehicles that, that were too heavy and taken off the road. So but that wasn't the stated purpose. Right. If if it was a keep our roads safe, and look, vehicles that are overweight are hard on the roads, and that's something that we all pay for. And if that was the goal is to is to get the overweight trucks off the road, understandable. If the stated goal was the environment and get uh, stop oil leaks, fine. I, I guess. I mean, most when you talk about an oil leak, you're talking about a drip. A truck's not going to lose all its oil because you just can't mm-hmm. because it won't go anywhere. I don't know, man. Uh, it was a bad idea. His excuse is even worse. But the problem, and I mean, he's kind of like DeSantis. I like a lot of what DeSantis does, but I hate the way he does it because, you know, it's not like when he got elected, he wanted to just challenge the federal government on 50 different things. Like he's waited until there's been a political opening to do it. And it's still the right thing to do in a lot of instances, but he he's doing it or giving the optics that he's doing it for the wrong reasons. Like, he wasn't just charging down the path of state, 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 state sovereignty. Right. And so, uh, in DeSantis's defense, 
COVID brought a lot of this around. It, it, it really put a highlight on it. But look, Florida, for a while, when, when I was down, I went to the Keys in 2020, in October, November 2020, whatever it was, whenever the hurricane hit me. It was still fairly masked up. Like, I walked into a 7-Eleven and told to go back and get my mask. I'm like, really? Yeah, hmm. I, 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 just, I just want a bag of Cheetos. But yeah, I, uh, and the restaurants, you would have to wear the mask when you walk to the table, take it off, put the mask on if you have to go to the bathroom, take it off when you sit down at the table. Plus the waiter at one of these places wearing masks with the vents on the side. And he already had an accent. It was a British accent. I mean, I already had an accent in a noisy restaurant, talking through a Darth Vader mask and with an accent. I had no idea. And I have I have some hearing loss. Uh, it, I had to just, Connie had to translate for me. I, I, he would say something. I just look at her and she'd go, oh, the lobster's the special today. Oh, okay. But, you know, Florida wasn't always this, this bastion of liberty through COVID. This is, this is something that is somewhat recent. And you're right. It, it, it came along when the political will and the people were fed up with it. All of a sudden, he is Ron Paul. Yeah, but and I mean, yeah, the COVID brought it all about. But it's not like we didn't know that they'd been delegating too much power to the states. I mean, to the federal government for eons. It's just like when it's when it happens in Georgia, everyone's going to be like, oh, no, how did this happen? Oh, well, I guess it happened because you made it happen. Yeah, when the Clean Air Act came out in the 70s, it gave the EPA wide sweeping uh, authority to to regulate things like, um, in my industry, refrigerant. Congress didn't pass a law uh, making R22 illegal. That's that's the old Freon that, that's in uh, uh, equipment that's over 15 years old. Uh, Congress didn't do that. EPA decided to do it. They just did it. Well, how can they do that? Well, when Congress did it, they didn't want to have to revisit it because Congress doesn't want to have to do anything. You do it once, you give you give the executive branch all this authority, and you don't have to go back and, and touch it again. And then we wonder how the EPA has authority to do things like, uh, or gives the EPA the idea they have the authority to, to mandate masks on airplanes or uh, stop evictions. It's because we've given them so much authority uh, they thought, you know, these the federal, the the uh, uh, executive branch thought they had the authority to do it. So anyway, Tennessee passes a bill requiring drunk drivers to pay child support if they kill a parent of a minor. Uh, I mean, why are children whose parents who are killed because of a drunk driver more worthy of money from the person responsible than anybody else? If you shoot somebody and kill them and they have a child, we never make them pay child support. First question. How do you pay child support when you're convicted of vehicular homicide or vehicular manslaughter, whichever state you're in? Well, they said that they'll give you a year after your conviction date to go ahead and start making those payments. After your conviction date? Because you don't usually... You may be in prison. I don't it's know. vehicular homicide. This, it's not just DUI. No, yeah. DUI, no. you spend, you, yeah, you spend one day in. I mean, I again, this is this goes back to one of your your cardinal rules. The bill is known as Bentley's Law. Yeah, it was, but then they changed it to Ethan Haley's and Bentley's Law. Bentley had a brother named Mason, and they didn't include Mason. <laughs> well, I meant your cardinal rule that any law that's named after somebody is just meant to pull on heartstrings. Oh yeah, totally. But it's just like it's not. This is and those and Bentley was orphaned by his his two parents were killed in a car crash with his four month old sibling, and then Bentley and his brother Mason survived, and they live with their grandmother. And I guess their grandmother needs the child support could have used, I mean, obviously you can't retroactively do that, but she could have used the child support. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's like always the case. Well, and, and I don't have a problem with this done civilly. And, and that way, if you get shot, if God, it, it's, a, it's such a horror, it's, it's a horrible thing to even talk about. But if a parent gets, gets shot in a robbery, uh, 
if if they happen to happen in on a bank at the wrong time and, and get themselves killed, if if somebody doesn't obey OSHA laws and drops a piano, moving it on somebody and and kills them, there we have civil courts for that very reason. Is you can sue them for that. Mm-hmm. So but- if this bill doesn't do anything, because if you don't have the ability to pay the child support because you're in prison, and when you get out of prison. Usually your prospects are not all that great. So I, I don't know how these how these folks are are supposed to pay it when you come out of you, you come out of prison and you're and you're working bagging groceries. Right. No, I mean so, I'm with you. I just I guess I'm I'm hung up on how inequitable it is because we don't do this for any other situation and then i say we but i mean like the, the the people don't advocate for this and um you know restitution restitution is reserved for the actual victim a, a child of somebody who was killed is not the victim. They're an impacted party, but they're not the victim. And then that's where the civil court comes in because there's wrong, wrongful death suits and and everything else. And, you know, if somebody dies because of the negligence of somebody else, you can sue them for, you know, like we, we talked about a couple weeks ago, for everything that person would have produced for the rest of their lives. You're, you can absolutely sue for that, and, there, and there, we have a mechanism for that. This this law is superfluous at best. Yeah. And again, I don't, I, I, I don't know how you're going to get anything f- from these folks. And look, it, it, some rich people do do commit vehicular homicide. Uh, one example is John Goodman, not the actor, mm-hmm. uh, the son of the uh, the founder of Goodman Heating and Air, a, a, a equipment manufacturer, was drunk and killed somebody driving. And obviously he had deep enough had deep enough pockets to make restitution. But your average guy who drank a 12-pack of Bush beer and hits a pedestrian on the way back to Walmart to get in the 12-pack, probably when they get out of prison, not, not going to have the greatest prospects. No. And, you know, the, the bill calls for the child to be the the compensation or support to be set based on the child's lifestyle um you know at the time of their parents death and and whatnot and i understand so I get- if 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 we kill a rich couple so if i if i if if i get drunk and mow down a rich couple i'm going to owe more than if i mow down somebody walking from the trailer park over across the street yeah i guess because 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 their lifestyle yeah but what I was going to get at, though, is that, like, if you go to a family member, I mean, like, it's a tragedy, and I understand that, and I don't wish that on any child to lose a parent or both parents or whomever, but, like, it's it's a tragedy, and it's life-changing, and, and life just sucks, and you might have a reduction in quality of life or standard of life, but it's not the government's duty to step in and ensure that you don't have a change in that. Like there is no duty to do that. I agree. And you know, not, not to belinger the point, but we have a mechanism for suing people and it's civil court. So I don't know. I, 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 this is something that, that reads really well in the papers. We, we all hate drunk drivers and they're an easy mark and they are a great group to, to go after when you want to run for re-election and and get money from MAD and and all that and, I, and I'm not I'm certainly not coming to the defense of drunk drivers certainly certainly not but say they're they're a very easy group to go after. Mm-hmm. So Supreme Court Thursday turned down a bid to allow uh, Puerto Rican residents to claim benefits under federal government's main disability insurance program. 
ruling that the Constitution does not require Congress to offer such payments to residents of the island, even though people born there are U.S. citizens. There's only one dissenting justice. Sotomayor? Yeah. New York. She was born in New York, but she has Puerto Rican roots. I mean, well, great. they don't pay taxes. Most of their, I mean, they pay like a small thing. I forget what it, like how it's calculated. We talked about it once on the show, I believe, but they don't pay the same federal income taxes. They don't have their estates and gift tax. They don't, they don't have excise taxes, none of that. So they're not paying in. If they it's pay. one of the reasons that Puerto Rican statehood will fail every time. Because they don't want to pay. Right. And I get it, but don't ask for anything either. And their, their entire argument behind this is that it's racist and that, you know, it's rooted in racism and whether the court should repudiate a series of century old cases that permit Congress and local governments to deny some rights to those living in unincorporated territories. Rights? So let me get this right. You want supplemental security income disability basically and you think you have a right to that without paying in no 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 that you just think you have a right to that at all no i mean i don't have a right to social security or medicare it's just something i'm promised because i'm paying in i don't have a right to it no one like it's not it's, it's not outlined cuz it's not supposed to exist in the first place i mean but i have zero rights well, fact is, if you don't pay into Social Security, you don't get anything out. It, you know, there are people that li live on the fringe of society. They're self-employed people who don't pay, uh, that, you know, they pay federal taxes, but they don't pay Social Social Security. So if they become disabled, there are no benefits for them because they didn't pay in. They didn't buy in to the program. And it's, it, it, it's funny to me that they're, they're going to call it racist when there is a lone dissenter. Yeah, I know. I don't think they anticipated that. Obviously, that came that assertion came before. Um, but Kavanaugh said that, you know, Puerto Rico's tax status and the fact that residents of Puerto Rico are typically exempt from most federal income taxes supplies a rational basis for likewise distinguishing residents of Puerto Rico from residents of the states for the purposes of supplemental security income benefits program. And he said that the federal government does fund a similar but narrower program for some low-income inhabitants of the Caribbean island. It is reasonable for Congress to take account of the general balance of benefits to and burdens on the residents of Puerto Rico. I mean, no, you can't do dollar for dollar. We don't get dollar for dollar what we pay in. Nobody does. I mean, it's like, that's why it's so messed up. But like, so I'm glad they're not doing that for Puerto Rico because... The rest of us are getting raked over the coals every year and don't get a dollar for dollar return. Right. And where would that money come from? It'd come from people who are working in the 50 states and paying into Social Security. And those would be the people that, that are funding it because, like I said, it's not dollar for dollar, but they're, they're, not, they're not kicking in at all. You know, if if we went to them and say, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna include you, uh, we're gonna you know starting today, we're gonna, we're gonna start including anybody who pays in," they'd be like, "Pay? What are you talking about? We're not paying in." Yeah. And and you can't you can't fly the racist flag on this one because liberal justices went uh, uh, voted this way too. The, the, we have a lone dissenter. What is it? Eight to one. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so to my or obviously is betraying her, her legal profession and going with her emotions rather than actually reading and applying constitutionality to it. She said, the jurisdiction in which an SSI recipient resides has no bearing at all on the purposes of requirement or requirements of the SSI program. For this reason alone, it is irrational to tie an individual's entitlement to SSI to that individual's place of residency. Um, actually... Sonia, it does because it's not a state. 
Right. They get they have special protections being a territory. They don't want to be their own country and they don't want to be a state. Because both of those outcomes involve them paying more. And she said she didn't buy the arguments about taxes because people on SSI typically have such low incomes that they don't pay that much federal income tax anyway. It's not federal income tax. It's Social Security. Oh, yeah. I mean, self-employed people, uh, sole proprietors and stuff, they pay federal taxes, but they, you know, income tax, but they don't necessarily pay Social Social Security because they don't have to Mm -hmm. unless unless they put themselves on a payroll which is the right way to do it. If you don't put yourself on payroll and you don't have those deductions, you, you, guess what? You're not in the system. And she said, and if you go ahead, sorry. And, and, and if you become disabled, guess what? SSI is not there for you because you didn't kick in. Well, she said, you know, and again, I'm with you. It shouldn't exist. No, it shouldn't. But, her, she's just totally off the rails here and said that, you know, they don't have any voting representation, so they have no ability to push for better treatment. Um, and equal treatment of citizens should not be left to the, um, like, the vague political process. It's not that vague. She's conflating issues. That's not the case she was, that was, that was put before the Supreme Court. The, the case of, of taxation without representation was not put before the court. Neither was citizenship. Right. That wasn't the issue. It was, do you qualify for SSI? And the fact is, you haven't paid in, therefore you can't take out. And the fact that she, she has to know she's wrong if she's the lone dissenter. She has to know. And, and that, that's why she's making irrational arguments about it, because th- there is no legal basis for her dissension. Yeah, I, I mean, he well, said, and um, one of the justices, I can't remember who it was now, but one of them in there, one of the, they had like a, he had a concurring opinion, but he said that, you know, he's rejecting it because that's what it, the, what it says, but, and he is appointed by Trump, it, he said that if the opportunity arises for there to be a um like a resolution or if an if the court is asked in a different way then it should be reconsidered and he said nothing in the constitution speaks of incorporated and unincorporated unincorporated territories nothing in it extends to the latter only certain supposedly fundamental constitutional guarantees nothing in it authorizes judges to engage in a sordid business of segregating territories and the people who live in them on the basis of race ethnicity or religion the the only thing that that makes sense about that statement is if you ask it a different way which is mm-hmm. true yeah the the court hears the case as it is presented and rules on and again we we've talked about it before the supreme court doesn't make wide sweeping uh, judgments. Mm-hmm. They rule on minute details within a case. And it may change something that, you know, the do- that may be the first domino that knocks, that knocks down the entire row, but they rule on minute details of within a case on constitutionality. That's all they do. So within this, what was brought to them is the only thing they can rule on. And Sotomayor forgot that. And she wanted to get into you know, racist and citizenship and, and disparate treatment and all that. It's just, it, it, that, that's not the case that was brought before them. And it, it shows that she is a poor justice and a very poor decision maker. This is a good time to remind you that these are our opinions and not those of anyone, not on the show or any respective company for which we may work, own, or otherwise associate ourselves with on a regular or irregular basis. Also, you can find other episodes and relevant stories over at thegeorgiavirtue.com. Oh, Lord. I followed this one when it happened, uh, when you did your little drawing on it. 
Yeah. County attorney for Screven County commissioner suggests excluding commissioner for official proceedings because she wishes to follow the law. Yeah. So this came out of the of Screven County, which we've talked about them lots of times before. Um, but basically there was recent, there was a meeting recently where they went into executive session and I don't know specifically why they were in there, but this was all recorded and they came back out and, um, you know, as is standard, you have to vote to come out of executive session and return to regular session. And um, they take minutes in the meetings of executive session, but they're not open to the public because, you know, that's why you're in executive session, because that subject matter is not there. So they're supposed to keep good minutes and then just keep them shielded from the public. But just like every other kind of minutes, they're supposed to approve them. So they come back from executive session and the chairman, Will Boyd, calls for a motion on the executive session minutes. And another commissioner, Allison Wills, says, are we talking about minutes from the executive session just a moment ago or from another time? And her reason for asking is, you know, the minutes have not yet been like I haven't seen them. So how can I vote on them? And the city or the county administrator who was. She had some other job. Then she was appointed to county clerk and then she was appointed to interim county manager. And now she is the county manager. But she doesn't have any of the qualifications for it. Like. You're supposed to have either a long like five, at least five years doing the job or have some of the certifications or the MPA equivalent or whatever. Like there's just certain things because of your man, you're basically managing the entire county budget and operations and everything. Um, she pipes in and says, you don't have to review them. You just approve them. And then we like basically put them away because they're not open to the public. And I'm watching this and I'm like, did she really just say that? Because, you know, the the law in Georgia is clear. And of course, we can all talk about how incompetent Chris Carr's office is, but it, it is a crime to violate the Open Meetings Act and to do things that, you know, I guess the, the simplest way is it to disparage the public trust. And so if you're going to sign your name to something that could get you in trouble, you'd want to see it first. Well, she says, you know, she, she asks about it and the commissioners start talking over her and there's there's lots of response. And one of the commissioners, J.C. Warren's like, I've been here 100 years and I've never had somebody talk about this. And like there someone's like, well, you signed the affidavit from the executive session, didn't you? And she said, no, I didn't because I was told I'm not supposed to, which is correct. And the city, the county manager pipes up and is like, you know, if you if I have a suggestion going forward, if if you don't if you have someone who doesn't think they're going to sign the minutes that are the affidavit in executive session, then they shouldn't be in the executive session. And the chairman's like, yeah, I agree with that, too. And then the meeting's over. I say all that like ridiculous summary for the fact that. Even if they don't have the authority to exclude her. But even if they did, why would you want to? Why would you want to just exclude somebody who is duly elected? And why would you want to be the person that suggests doing that? It's not about her. It disenfranchises all of her constituents. They don't care. They hate her so much. They they don't care. You know, first of all, you know, even even with my little insignificant unconstitutional board that, that I co-chair, the minutes that we approve are from the previous meeting. Yes. And the reason you approve those minutes is you review them because it is the recollection of whoever's acting as secretary for that meeting. Is there they are taking notes? And we are we are going through and reviewing them, saying that's right. Okay, yes, I made that motion, or I seconded that motion. Yes, or you go. You know what? No, I I, I abstained from that, or I I voted no on that, and and you can adjust the minutes and not approve them. That's the purpose of approving the minutes. Is 
everybody who was involved in that vote is saying, yes, that's what happened. And it's put into the official record. Which is the same reason that not everybody has to sign the affidavit because the the entire premise of having the chair do it is so that you collectively don't organize to lie about what happened. Like by putting one person on the hook, he's not going to lie for everybody else. You pit people against yeah. each other by having one person be the signer of the affidavit. Because it's an honor and system. That's, that's the, the only thing we have. Right. And, and that's the, that's the purpose of the affidavit is the the person in charge, and you know we don't do an affidavit, uh, you know the because you don't the, go in executive chair, session, right? No, we don't. But but the chair and the co chair sign uh, separately on on the on on the documents. Uh, you know on I guess it essentially is an affidavit of, of of you know we held this meeting and and on all that stuff and, and you know uh, Lamar who's the chair and I b- both sign. And it handed over to to the folks that the the actual employees for the county that that truly run the meeting and tell us and tell us what we can and can't do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is funny on, on that. I, I made a motion to approve, and it was seconded because I've never done anything but make a motion to approve. Nice. Uh, and the guy sitting next to me goes, "Hey, can can we uh, make a make a change to this?" And I just turned and said, "No, you can't. It's the the motion's been made and seconded. You can you can vote no, but you can't change it now. The motion's in the books." And and uh, looked over at, at you know the guy who keeps us legal, uh, Mr. Robinson, and he's like, "Yeah, that's that's the way it is. You, you have to vote up or down at this point, or you know it'd be up to me to withdraw the motion." And I did not because I, I you know I don't really care what people do with their own private property. Yeah. I really am the worst person for that board. I, that's why I was appointed was because because I lean libertarian. Like, yeah, motion to approve. It's your property. I don't care. Right. It's just. But 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 back but back on this. But that's but it was so ridiculous. This and how and look, I really like uh, non agreement on boards. I I really prefer it that way. I want there to be a little animosity. Especially in county commissions, I want there to be animosity. I, I want people to disagree. I don't like it when they come out of executive session, everybody smiling, go, "All right, let's just approve everything." Because I know damn well what's happening behind closed doors is they're making they're making deals, and they've decided how they're going to vote before they come out. Absolutely, that's how it's been done over there for decades, and look what they have to show for it. It's not just there; it's a lot of places. It's one of the reasons that I'm supporting Virginia Galloway for post three out here. And she was faith and freedom. And Virginia and I don't agree on a lot, but I know one thing about her. She's not going to go behind closed doors and let that stuff happen. Maybe, I know damn maybe, well that maybe if, you'd be surprised how know. people go in and disappoint you once they're elected. Yeah, I've yeah, seen it she would agree too many you. times. They 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 get there, and I'm not saying she will. I'm just saying you can never be certain because sometimes the people who pretend that they're staging a dang coup are. The problem, and you know that, that could be right, and, that, and that's something that she has said from people that she supported, and they say they 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 believe something, and, and from from her from her standpoint with faith and freedom, uh, agree, 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 and take her support to run for office and then do something else when they're in office, and that's what you know. I, I've heard that story from her, you know, many times. Like I said, she and I don't agree on a lot. I mean, there's a lot of well, stuff we she's don't agree wrong on. on a lot. Well, yeah, but from for, and this is why I really think that people don't examine the ins and outs of what the sector of fire is for every different position and level of government. Within her sector of fire as a county commissioner, she has no control over marijuana authorization. She has no control of any of that. Her her thing is strictly county. It's one of the reasons I think that county races should be nonpartisan because mm-hmm. – I really don't care what you think about gun control. What do you, what your, what are your plans for the county, and how are we going to get there? I don't, I don't care if you put a D after your name, an R after your name, or you know an L after your name. It doesn't matter. What, what are your plans for the county, and how are you going to vote? You know, city elect- elections are nonpartisan. County should be too. And the only reason they're not is money. 
But as, as far as as far as this uh, this lady's concerned, it, it look she actually interacted with you on on the post that you put on on Facebook, and I it, it of course I you know I don't I've never talked to her I don't, I don't know her obviously you do, um, she doesn't seem bothered by the fact that they despise her. No, she just wants them to follow the damn law. No, and and you know there's people who say like oh she's just a you know a dissenter all she cares about is. Just causing problems. Well, why is it a problem to follow the law? Why is that the problem position? Why is why is she the one lobbying bombs because she's like, hey, don't we have to do it this way? Because they don't want to be called out. The same reason they don't like you in, in, a, in a lot of counties is you bring things up like you have to obey the law. I think we did. A, what's that? No, I think. And I mean, in some counties, and I think. I, I think this is one of them. I, I think there are instances where it bothers them tremendously that a woman wants to correct them. And I am not that person that says that very often. But I, I was I was thinking the same thing when I was reading the uh, the text that you that you posted up last week that you got through uh, open records mm -hmm. about, about whether or not to let you speak at the meeting. Mm -hmm. And, and I was wondering if I would get the same pushback. You know, I'm older. I, 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 I'm a man. Last time I checked. Well, the uh, person who said that I, is about your age. Okay. Yeah. I mean, but would I, would I get the same pushback that, that you do? If I wanted to stand up and speak, if if it were Dave Roberts, not Jessica Salagi, standing up and and saying, "Look, you can't do it that way." Hey, look, these numbers are wrong. Would I get the same pushback that you do? And that that that, that is that. And I wonder. And look, I'm <laughs> I'm not super. You know, oh, it's because you're a woman guy, just like you. I mean, you're you're the world's worst feminist. You're worse than I am. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, there are things that that you have to acknowledge and. One of them is you're you're young, a woman. I mean, I assume so. I haven't seen evidence to that effect. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> mm -hmm. But but you're young, pretty, smart, and that that sometimes is intimidating to guys who are not young, not attractive, and not smart. And wrong. Like, well, and wrong. Right, and don't like being called on it, and to make it worse, they don't want to be called on it by uh, from from you know some little girl. So yeah, I, I think there is something to it, and it's probably the same thing that what's her name, Allison. Yes. Yeah, was, uh, I, I would call her Miss whatever. I just can't remember her last name. I just remember saying Allison, Allison. Wilson. Yeah. Uh, Wilson. Willis. The same thing. The commissioner Will Willis. Commissioner Willis may be running up against is at that. Based on her picture, like I said, I don't know her. She's younger, and she's coming in, and she's holding him account, and they're just like, "Sit down, sweetie. You don't know what you're talking about. You know what? You don't need to come to an ex executive session if you're not going to play our game. Just, just you sit out here with with the public. We'll go handle the man business. Right. And look, I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not super uh, uh, affirmative action man. I'm just, just. There, there is something to it. It's one of the reasons that I advanced so quickly in banking is because I was a man. I guarantee that's because that's why it was. Mm -hmm. Because I've known women with way more qualifications than I had that, that that did not did not rise to being on the corporate side as fast as I did. People were way more educated than I than I am. Uh, were were waiting in line, and I, and I was pushed ahead of them. And I, I knew damn well what was happening. It doesn't mean I didn't cash the checks. Right. <laughs> I'm not, no, I'm I not mean, that virtuous. Yeah. It's just, and it, and that, and if that's the reason that's fine, like whatever it's, it's, you're still wrong no matter what. I mean, no matter how you cut it, whatever your justification is, you're still wrong. Well, and it may be, it's more something that you find down there. I don't, think it's much of an issue up here on the government side, whether whether somebody's a woman or somebody's a man. It's, I don't know there's that as much of an issue. 
Uh, but I certainly think that, and look, I hate the term good old boys because, you know, I, I may not be a good old boy out here, but I'm certainly friends with a lot of them. Uh, but it, it could be that, you know, they don't take her seriously. She's, I, I assume she's uh, younger than, than the other members of the board. And they just don't like her. They don't like being called on it. It's just like, you know, the, the, the text stream, like Jessica wants to talk. <sighs> what does she want to talk about? I swear to God, I am just so impressed. They did not use any four letter words to refer to you. Yeah. I mean, I am a little bit surprised, but I also don't think I, I wouldn't be surprised if I did not get everything that was. Because I yeah, have, it, I got that, a lot of stuff that's redacted because they're still considering potential litigation. So, um, go for it. But I mean, so it's redact. Like they're supposed to provide it, even if it's all blacked out. But I don't think they even did that. Well, too bad we don't have a decent attorney general. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe in January. So we have the jackass of the week. Yeah, good old Matt Breeden down in Effingham County. He's the Ogeechee Judicial Circuit Assistant District Attorney. Um, he's from, I don't know where he's from, but because he has an accent that is not from around here. Um, but he worked in southwest <laughs> Georgia for a while. Then he worked in Savannah under Meg Heap. Um, and when he was in southwest Georgia, he had a couple cases overturned by the Georgia Supreme Court, and he was admonished twice, I believe, for things he did and things he said during a trial that were inappropriate or in instances where he did not turn over all of the evidence. Um, and then in in Chatham County, he violated disclosure. Mm hmm. And then in Savannah, he did that should, he did something similar. That should get you disbarred. Oh, but it doesn't. There is zero consequence. I mean, that should get that. you absolutely, yeah. That should get you disbarred. Mm-hmm. But it just keeps you getting are him higher. Obligated, yeah. You are obligated to turn over every piece of evidence you have so that the defense can. Yeah, but how do you can, prove that? I mean, almost every prosecutor in the state doesn't. Almost every single one of them. They they just don't, and you don't find out until after. So and that person's already in jail. Now they have to fight to get out. Jeez. So, what did old Matt Breeden do? He shot himself in the in the leg. Well, I'm sorry. His suit jacket button shot him. All right. So he carries a Sig. I, I can't remember what what number it is. A, a three a P three twenty. I think. I think that's right. Uh, it does not have an external safety. Before anybody thinks that. Uh, the, I don't use safeties. I don't use safeties anyway. I, I day to day I carry a Glock. Uh, if the only one I the only thing I use a safety on is if I carry a 1911 uh, in in the proper position, which is hammer back and safety on. Uh, but other than that, if if I if I carry if I carry my 92 FS, I don't I don't, I don't use a safety. Safeties are a good way of getting yourself killed because you you forget to take them off if, if you need them in in uh, in, in the moment. Your safety is your is your finger. Um, this particular firearm has a heavy trigger pull, and most firearms that do not have uh, an external safety do. They have a very heavy trigger pull. Uh, I've I've got a a revolver that is hammerless that does not have a safety. Very heavy trigger pull. Uh, I had a I've had several firearms that 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 are like that. So a suit button on on a on a sports coat or on a suit jacket it doesn't have seven or eight pounds of of pull on it plus in order for that suit jacket for that button to cause that firearm to go off you would have to push the firearm forward pulling the the hammer uh, pulling the, the trigger back with seven or eight pounds of pressure to make it go off mm-hmm uh, I don't know how he was carrying, if it, if it was index, uh, if he carries it on a side, if he carries it inside the waistband, or if he was carrying a shoulder holster. I have no idea. He's, I, believe, I, don't, I believe it was a holster on his hip, on the just under his jacket. So I don't know how in the hell he got his button in it. Now, 
gentlemen certainly can can, can visualize this, uh, right-handed or left-handed. Uh, if you were to visualize putting your hands on your hips and then under under your jacket trying to feel for a button, where the hell's the button? There's not one. Your button is in front, or you have one a lot of times on the on the inside pocket, but you would have to draw the weapon and take it all the way up to your chest mm-hmm. to catch that one, or all the way up to you know your belly button to catch the lowest button on even a, a three button coat. And that would be very difficult. I, I, maybe if you pulled the jacket to the side like your old West and wearing a duster and you, and you, and you're in a, in a gunfight, maybe but still, you'd have to draw it really high. And I, I, I can't visualize how to get a suit coat button inside the trigger housing and push it with enough force to make it go off in such an angle that it gets your leg. So he either is lying or misremembering a tragic moment. Yeah, I don't... Now, why Why was he drawing his weapon, Jessica? He wanted to show it to his friend. Another ADA. It's not he a toy, to boy. I have shown many firearms to many people, mm-hmm. and I've even taken them off my hip. I have yet to shoot myself or the floor or any or anybody else doing it because you obey the the you know, basic firearm handling rules, which is you take it out of the holster, you point it in a sh- safe direction, drop the magazine, pull the slide back, eject the round from the chamber, hand it to somebody with the slide locked back displaying that it's that it's empty and you hand it to them and that's the proper way to to hand a firearm to somebody yeah i don't know this jackass yeah he is a jackass and um mm, i don't know i you know prosecutors and judges are permitted to carry in a courthouse and the only i don't you know do i think you should be fired do i think you should be charged Mm, a little bit, a little bit. I do, yes. If they don't, it's not some. It's not a hill I'm going to die on. I do think he should be prohibited from bringing a weapon. I don't think he should be allowed to carry in our courthouses anymore. He's obviously like, I mean, the entire premise of arming people in our courthouses when the general public can is so that, like, for safety, so that people are like we the whole more good guys with a gun thing, and he's obviously not that. Yeah, someone walks in the courthouse with a gun, he's going to shoot himself. Yeah, it's. Well, I, guess, I guess that's one way of of of, dis, of of shocking somebody who walks in the courthouse with a gun is go ahead and shoot yourself in the leg and fall down. Ah, oh, he's such a jackass. I mean, I, I I read this thing and I was, I. It's half funny because he shot himself. It would not have been funny if he shot the floor to ricochet and hit somebody. No. You know, it, it's only. It's only funny because he hurt himself. Correct. So that, oh, f that guy. Look, it, charges. I don't know. I don't know what specific reckless charges conduct. to to hit him with. Reckless conduct, maybe. He could have killed look, somebody if I had done it. They would charge me with reckless conduct. There's nobody who is who is more unsafe with a firearm than Dick Donovan. Because he'd he'd whip it out at a party and show and show people his pistol. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'd rather see his pistol. Yeah, yeah well, oddly enough, uh, at at like six foot five or whatever he is, he carried the smallest pistol possible, a Ruger LCP, which is a little tiny three eighty pocket gun, and wore it outside his pants. Yeah, I bet he did. <laughs> so yeah, uh, look, he should be fired. If not charged, he should be fired. I mean, just, I, you can't disbar him for it. He should have been disbarred for not disclosing, uh, not following a disclosure uh, protocol, but uh, he should be fired from, from his post and, and honestly, never be a prosecutor again. Go into private practice. Uh, next time you go into a courtroom, you'll go in unarmed and everybody will be safer for it. Mm-hmm. So we have the First Amendment Clinic censures Grantville decision to sue resident. 
Yeah, so the city... This of, hits close to home, doesn't it? Yeah, the city of Grantville, I think it's in Coweta County. Um, and they recently admonished a citizen for filing, quote, in, in um, well, they said he filed too many open records requests from August until, I guess, maybe March of this year when this all kind of came to blows. And they said that it's put an un, inordinate burden on the city clerk. And he, and he has this... Um, his name is Mr. Royce, but he's put he has this website called Grantville Corruption, where he criticizes city staff, um, volunteers, council members, anybody who like with city business. It's not all of, you know, everyone, but he, he does admonish them on there and they're citing they send him a letter um, and they're before this is before, the city council did this. They sent Mr. Royce a letter claiming that he could be um, charged with bias-motivated intimidation, which was passed by the legislature, I think, a year or two ago um, with regard to first responders. So if someone um, targets, intimidates, harasses, or terrorizes another person because of that person's actual or perceived employment as a first responder, they can be charged with this crime. And so... um, I I don't know. I first of all, there's no such thing as too many open records requests. Like there have been because and the reason I say that is because you know, sometimes I have to divide it up because I need to get something before I can get something else. Sometimes I divide it up because I don't know something until I get the records that they do have so I can ask more questions. Sometimes I divide it up because I know it's going to take them time and I know it's going to cost me money. Like it doesn't matter. That's why there is nothing about that. Second, the more you put online on the front end, the less you have to give out on the on the request side because you've already made it available. Like, I guarantee you that Grantville is not one of these cities where you go to their website and they just have a list of documents that are frequently requested or sought that they just went ahead and made publicly available. So I, that's just the, the preface here. On top of that, um, I mean... He hasn't threatened anybody or caused a breach of the peace. Like, there's no victim. Um, And he's publishing information that they give to him. They don't like being held accountable. The records, they're called open records for a reason. It's not asking for what the public should should have access to anyway is not intimidation. They're if they sue them, they're going to lose. Maybe they should have like four Grantful Police Department uh, police mm-hmm. officers show up next time he he goes to a meeting and just stand around him to to make sure that he knows he's being watched. Well, and whether they want to seek criminal prosecution or they want to sue him civilly, I mean, both are wrong. Both are inexcusable, and both are what tyrants do when they want to suppress. Um, when they want to suppress free speech and like Lincoln, the free, yeah, a little bunch of little Lincolns over there in Coweta County. Yeah, exactly. And look, the the guy, because they don't like what he has to say, they don't want to be called out on their corruption. That is literally the basis their, of it. Yeah, they don't want to be called out on their actions. No, 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 no. You, all right, we have told you enough, and we're not telling you anymore. No, that's not how this works. And he shouldn't have to to go and have different people pull ORRs for him because so they have different names. It, no, if I've done just that go before. ahead and open. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm sure. So I don't I, screw Granville. I mean, that just jackasses. Boy, that that's the that's the theme of the week. Jessica, do you have any closing thoughts as we're about to run long? I'm just hoping next week has fewer jackasses. Good luck with that. Of course, if they did, you wouldn't have anything to write about. Uh, I have the story. Actually, Connie gave this one to me. Uh, Vanderbilt nurse is, uh, has been found guilty. She's waiting to be sentenced on uh, May 13th. She was kind of hung out to dry by Vanderbilt. Uh, she was, a, a, I think, an emergency department nurse. 
they had to, uh, she was trying to sedate somebody and there were two drugs in the cart that have very similar names. One's a paralytic and one is uh, a sedative. She grabbed the wrong vial, almost immediately realized she messed up. She told everybody she messed up. She tried, the guy died. It's tragic. Uh, It's an absolute civil case and Vanderbilt has already settled with the family. But they hit her for uh, for a negligent homicide. The nursing board cleared her, and the prosecutors went ahead and went forward with it. And the the ripple effect of this, as, as horrible as it is for this woman who had no intention of harming anyone, the ripple effect is nurses now are second-guessing themselves. They're... A lot of them said they're not going to, because this has to do with intubation, uh, doing a doing a trach tube. You have to, you really have to, you have to sedate somebody because obviously most people don't want things shoved into their lungs. Um, and these nurses saying we're not going to do it. And, and like you said before the show, when we talked about this case, time is a factor in the emergency department. Uh, if if you're if you're sticking a trach tube in or 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 intubate or, or whatever other terms they use for it. If, if you're doing that, this person's having trouble breathing and they're saying, nope, we need a doctor to, to prescribe it and tell us exactly what we're doing. Because we're not, we're not going to prison. And the, the ripple effect of this is, is horrible. And you're going to find nurses getting out of emergency and going into, you know, going into being, you know, nurses in, a, in an office somewhere or going to do paperwork or, or a general practitioner and taking people's uh, temperature rather than doing what they've been trained to do and work in emergency departments. Mm-hmm. And this, this prosecutor obviously made his case pretty well, but I, it, Did it he seems know? That doesn't dispro- I mean. Making, making a good argument doesn't make you right. I should say making a persuasive argument doesn't make you right. So I, it's that that's the bummer. Uh, I, I know I, I hate to hate to end the show with a with a bummer story, but it's something to to keep an eye on. And next time you're in the in the emergency room waiting and waiting and waiting, and they don't have the staff. Well, I mean, that's one of the things that that's between stories like this and. And the uh, mandates for for getting for getting a shot and, and everything else, nurses are getting out of the business. Yeah, you know, so it, the only people that lose are all of us. Oh, lucky. So, yeah, for Eric Cumby, our awesome editor, for Jessica Salaji, my partner in this endeavor, I'm Dave Roberts. Have a great week. Oh, I've been running from the law. They sing on a sleepless night. Try to catch me howling at the moon. Once I fight it to the very end.